Hello, my name is Franz and today I will show you the new Diamond Film Colorizer. The user interface of the Colorizer is based on our Diamond Film Restoration software. We have implemented new filters and tools to enable colorization of black and white film and video. In the sample we are using today, I have a black and white uh, newsreel, um, which we are going to colorize now. As I said before, we have several new tools and filters to do that. First, I will select a starting frame of this scene where I want to start my colorization. Usually, I would choose one in the middle of the scene and one where I have most of the objects present, which I want to colorize. The colorization filters are available on the filter tracks and as in Diamond, I can open up the available tracks. And here I have a group colorize where I have different colorization filters. The most important one is the colorize filter itself. This filter allows me to colorize objects of a scene and transform or render the colorization onto the whole clip. Another filter is the color image sample, which allows me to use a reference image, a colored one, where some AI technology takes the colors out of it and applies it to my current scene. And the third one is a fully manual or semi-automatical thing where I paint objects and then roll out the colorization via ordinary tracking or manual tracking stuff over the time. Um, most of the time you would need a mix of the filters. Um, in this scene here, I would like to show you how to start with the color image sample. Let's put it down to the timeline. The color image sample now automatically expands to one single image. And as you can see here, it would require a sample image. So the difficult part is now to find uh, an image which we can use. So either you have a collection of color images which would fit or whatever, um, that would be helpful. but. For me now, I just used the Google image search and what I typed in, I just bring over my browser. What I typed in is uh, dinner with family and in the evening. Uh, uh, it brings me some images over here. And here I have one uh, image which I take and I can just click on that and drag and drop this onto this. So this is then what the color transfer, the color image transfer is taking out this image and applies it on that. I can play with the chroma if it's too much or too less. I can reduce a little, little bit the chroma on that maybe to this one. Um, sometimes you get in wrong colors on the image. Uh, so you can go edit. This will bring you up the editor. And I can exclude some regions which I don't want to go into the color image transfer. So right now you see I have a basic colorization on the image, but it's still not very good, of course. But it gives you a starting point for the wood, for the tablecloth, for the background, for the guy, for the skin tones, and so on. So that's something uh, where we can start with. And for now, this is only colorizing one single image. So that's, uh, but we want to have the whole scene at the end. So I go to my filter track two, so I have another track. And now I use the colorize filter and I tell the colorize filter uh, uh, 
that this should be a reference frame. So this would be the reference frame for this scene. And I can create several reference frames um, at the end. The next step would be to improve the colorization so that we have accurate and nice, that we have accurate and nice colors. So let's start with something easy at the beginning. So I would start with the, with the chair over here. How to do this? I have to segment the chair. You see it, the brown is not everywhere the same as we would like it, but basic color is what I like. So what I would do is create a new object. Let's call the object chair. And I will learn the colors now from this object by creating a screenshot tool. And I take a screenshot from my own screen. This brings me up a window like this and say, okay, I, I like the colors from to be extracted from here in different brightness or so from dark to bright okay like this okay so i created now a gradient map of the chair colors and next i would select the chair as an object here by clicking in the middle uh, here it shows me the segmentation of it and i see okay here it's too much in the shadow, I do a right click and so I get a better segmentation and here is something missing, I do a left click. So I've selected the chair and now I'm applying uh, the gradient map to it. So maybe the bright ones I don't like, I right click here and you see actually I'm getting a different colorization of my chair. So now, now I like the gradient map of the chair. Then next we see here the, the skin tones are not everywhere as we want it. So I create an object called skin and I learn actually the skin tones from over here and the different brightnesses. Okay, and I create a new object like hand in this case, and I can copy this skin down to the hand with Control C, Control V, or with copy and right click, paste. Yeah, and now I can go into the segmenter and segment this. You see it's overdoing over here. And okay, that's okay now. So I've taken this guy. I still don't like the shirt very much. So it's a bit blue, bluish, white bluish, but but not, not in the way that I like it. So what I do is I create a new object called shirt. And I'm selecting the shirt now, like going into the middle. So you see here the default color is orange and that's all over it. So I right click again on the guy's face and the boy's face and here a little bit more. Okay, that's about where the shirt is. That's good. Um, Okay, but and now I'm going to show you how to create uh, a special gradient map for this, for this guy. So first I reset it, the gradient map back to black and white with this key over here and we have it now black and white. And you see here this um, color picker, brightness picker. So I can go there and pick a gradient value uh, let's say around here and here you see how in the luminance where in the luminance range i am i can double click on this and it brings me a color wheel and i want to go this should be a bluish style okay 
let's do a blue. Now I have a bluish shirt and I take another color picker for the bright ones. And this should, should be more white and less saturated. Okay, so I can go down a bit. And probably for the blue, I would desaturate a little bit as well. I think this is something we can live with. Let's look in black and white. Here I'm not sure if this is still hand or not hand, so probably it is, so I can over correct hand and I can go into my brush with my brush smaller and I can over write this now to over paint this area with skin tone uh, which fits better I think okay so we have done his shirt and the skin tone here. The skin here is not perfect, so I go go again, go into my segmentation and say I want to segment this, but only this part here. Okay, I have to go here as well. So I'm adding a skin tone on this. And so on. So I can, here we can go to the tablecloths. So here there are different colors in the table, tablecloth. So we, I create a new object table, table C. Again, I like the colors from here. Create a gradient map of that, maybe something else in the darkness, dark area. So I've learned the color and I will apply it now uh, to different parts like here. Let's go in segmentation. Not on the spoon. I exclude the spoon again. Okay, that's uh, here. It's a bit too reddish. I click on that. That's okay. Here, the plate is has wrong color on one side. Maybe I want to use the whole color from this. Uh, create a jump plate. And. I learn it from my initial colorization, okay, and go to this side of it. Okay, so the hands from the guy are still a bit irritating from the colors, I would say. So what I do, I have a skin here. I copy this, I create a new object, hands two, I paste the gradient map from that to this. Now I select the hands, let's move my segmentation tool. Here's a bit too much, a bit too much over here, a bit too much over here, so it's good. And I see it's very oversaturated, so I go in here and bring down the saturation a bit. Okay, that's that's good enough. Well, maybe a bit too much, so go back a little bit. Okay, the next thing is here, the shirt color. I don't like that much. I create a new object shirt. Let's learn it from here as well, as we did with the other samples. 
uh, but I only want to have this here. Okay, and let's select this one and this one. That's okay. And so I could continue forever. I could be as accurate as I want. I can select colors from where I want. I can learn colors from a screenshot. I can load an image to learn the colors from, or I can create my gradient map fully manually. So I can have two different luminances, different colors, which would be, allow me to, for instance, colorize a flag easily by selecting the different luminance regions and assign it to different colors. So up to now, I showed you how to start with a simple reference image. What it learned from this image is that the brownish from the table was taken to this. Uh, the skin tones of the of the people were applied to these people over here, um, and the rest of, was fitted from other material as and so on. Yeah. For here, the fish the fish is still a bit green, which is not not optimal. So let's go create a new object fish and I will just want to apply this color to the whole fish auto segment on so let's see segmenting this okay that that will do for my C. As I said, you can be as accurate as you need to be. Uh, you can fully control the colors for every object and be as precise as you want with the objects. Yeah. But still, so far, we have just colorized a single frame. And now I'm going to show you how to expand or render the color onto the whole scene and the color rise filter can do that. Um, the easiest way is just to press render filter. And that's what I'm doing. So what it's doing now is that starting from my reference frame, yeah, that the colorizer filter will take this color image and will move from image to image and there is a, a newly developed technology from us it's an ai based, based technology to forward the colors in a precise way on to a whole scene so this rendering takes quite or it needs quite a, a powerful graphics card to do this and in here you can see that here you can see my my graphic cards usage and uh, cpu usage so the graphic card is quite heavily used so let's see what it does when i step now on the area which is turned into green i would see already uh, the colorization expanded rendered over the time and you can see even that the objects are moving uh, the colors should follow to it of course there is a certain amount which can be handled only uh, because with new objects uh, appearing in a scene uh, the system does not know automatically which colors to use so the trick would be to use um, to create additional reference frames where you just need to colorize as i showed you before those parts which are not correct anymore or where the color does not fit anymore or if where you want to be more precise or where new objects appeared but let's render this for now and uh, 
and we will we will we'll see and play through the scene thereafter yeah so the whole scene is about 108 frames long and the graphics card i'm using right now is a rtx a4000 from nvidia so we do need an nvidia graphics card for now and the faster and better <laughs> the better it is so now it started to expand everything from the reference frame to the beginning and it's doing the same thing now from the reference frame towards the end as you can see here at this area uh, we lost we lost most of her shirt that's not fitting we lost her face we lost uh, the hand from her so so what we would will do i will show you in a second how to how to deal with that Okay, now this is finished. I will show you how to deal with the changes over here, for instance. I select this image. I create a new reference frame by pressing R. And now I would like the hand. I go to my skin color. I can reuse that. Select her hand. And it's a bit too much over here too much over here but that's okay they do her face as well okay then let's do her shirt uh, let's see if I have a good color of her shirt somewhere yeah let's take this one or oh, is it blouse let's call it blouse and I will learn again this colors over here. I return to my reference frame and okay, let's do this. And now I can render again what it does. It, it takes then this reference frame and this reference into account. And from there, it would use all, all the new uh, information to be applied on the scene. So let's see how this looks now uh, with the, that we have overworked the scene and let's play through the scene and then the other side i think it's okay so what i do now is i do a side by side to see you uh, uh, black and white as it was before uh, with this let's call it quick and dirty colorization of one scene Of course, I did not show you all the possibilities yet, and I was not that accurate as I could be. For instance, um, let me show quickly how to, to use tools. So like I go to my tool track over here and I can select a skin, skin object again here. And I can use a brush in the colorize to paint, or I can use my selection tool as well, just to paint here. Just, uh, it's a bit, just to paint this part of the skin tones, for instance. 
to re like this or I can use a brush to overpaint just a part of it where where it's not that where I liked it or something like this so, so I can quickly go there and and draw on some frames where where I'm not happy with the colors I can draw new colors on it yeah uh, anyway, as you can see, colorization is still some work, but with the Diamond Film Colorizer, you have the full control over the colors. So um, that's the great benefit over other automatic colorization tools where you don't have the control of the colors uh, as you have with the Diamond Film Colorizer. I hope you have enjoyed the quick tour uh, in the Diamond Film Colorizer and that I could show you the, the, some principles how, how to work with it. Thank you.